Hi, my name is Connor Nevin and I did my precedent on Phillips Exeter Academy Library, designed by Louis Icahn from 1965 to 1971. Louis Icahn brought architecture into a new light of recognition with his use of mass, light, and structure. He designed structures in their true nature, making sure the materials used to construct the buildings were in their suitable form. He often asked the question, what does a brick want to be? When he was designing Phillips Exeter Academy Library, he had, the, he had the idea in mind that Exeter was going to be a temple for learning. The committee was skeptical at first of their choice of Khan, but he was the perfect man for the job. He was there to create a laboratory for research and exp experimentation, a quiet retreat for study, read and reflection, and the intellectual center of the community. To begin his design, Kahn sought to study the traditional colonial red bricks surrounding this building. Designed by Ralph Adams Cram from the 1900s to 1930s. In addition, he kept to the principles of the idea of a book, or as like he liked to call it, an offering of knowledge. And he also acknowledged the library to be a sacred place where books are stored. The institution of a library held a special purpose in Kahn's mind. Exeter was going to be the contemplation of knowledge itself. Khan's design was slow at first because he was in India and Pakistan working on other projects. But, and he also had budget problems and the site environment wasn't the best for the building. Although the final design was constructed. It was a cubic structure with a brick shell covering the exterior of the library and a concrete interior with multiple uses of teak wood for the windows, bookshelves, and smaller walls. The structure is 111 foot square that ascends 85 feet tall with nine floors. The exterior facades keep to its geometric form and they're all exactly the same. It also was criticized because there's no conceivable entrance. Although he thinks the entrance defines the facade's form too much and that it would ruin the cube ge geometry. As you enter into this massive building, you go into the interior and you come up upon this huge atrium. It gives this amazing spatial effect, much like a gothic cathedral, using scale and volume to astound the visitor on their arrival. The atrium ascends up nine floors with concrete planes, with circumscribed circles cut out of their surface, leaving only four columns of concrete. At the top of the atrium, there are two massive concrete beams in the form of an X with a tech tac board like concrete arrangement beyond the X, creating a beautiful arrangement. Furthermore, the construction of the building can be seen in the joints of the building in the concrete. He likes to show you how the, the uh, he likes to show you the technical aspects of construction. The space within the circular openings is divided by the different floors and the bookshelves themselves. As you start to go from the middle out towards the perimeter, it becomes less of a social area and more of an academic area where you find stairs, bathrooms, and study areas, especially study corrals, one of the most important parts of the building. Study corrals are little study areas where students can bring their books they are on the perimeter of the building. On the perimeter of the building they can take the books and study under natural light. The study corrals are placed right by the windows on the exterior. He likes to call the experience bringing the books to light. And with this final design, Khan completes his modern exemplar of libraries. The construction of the Exeter Academy Library was completed in 1971. By then, it was obvious that Khan was true to his word and created an institution of learning that all architects would soon come to recognize as a modern template to library design. Khan's design of the Exeter Library is truly a monument to American architecture.